Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome the Reverend Franklin Graham. Good evening. How many are here tonight for the first time? Where were you last night? We missed you. It looks like almost everybody is here for the first time tonight. We're so thankful for the choir, all the musicians that have played tonight. And tonight I'm very thankful for the committee and the churches that invited us to come. And so tonight, we come, and tonight we want to talk to you about God's Son, Jesus Christ. God loves you. If you don't remember anything else, remember this. God loves you. He made you. He created you. And tonight, I'm going to invite you to do something tonight. If you're here tonight and you have never invited Jesus Christ to come into your heart, tonight I'm going to give you an opportunity. And in a few moments, I'm going to invite you to come and stand in front of this platform. Telling God that you're a sinner. Asking His forgiveness. And by faith, inviting His Son, Jesus Christ, into your heart, into your life. Jesus Christ is God's son. He came from heaven to this earth to take your sins. He died on a cross for your sins. But on the third day, God raised his son to life. Jesus Christ is not dead. He's alive and he's here tonight. And if you're willing to believe on his name by faith, God will forgive your sins. He'll heal your heart. And you can have that assurance of eternal life through faith in Him. I want to look at a text in the Bible. Now, many people have asked me, is God real? He's real. And he made you and he created you. And he loves you. I want to look at this passage in the Bible. Have you ever wanted to run? Run from your problems. Want to run from school. Want to run from your family. Well, tonight I want to look at a young man who was a runner. He ran from his father. He ran from God. And I want to read this story to you. All right, this is Luke. 
Chapter 15. And I'm starting in verse 11. Jesus continued, there was a man who had two sons. The younger one said to his father, Father, give me my share of the estate. So he divided his property between them. Not long after that, the younger son got together all that he had, and he set out for a distant country. And while there, he squandered his wealth and wild living. After he'd spent everything, there was a severe famine in the whole country, and he began to be in need. So he went and he hired himself out to a citizen of that country who sent him to his fields to feed pigs. He longed to fill his stomach with the pods that the pigs ate, but no one gave him anything. When he came to his senses, he said, how many of my father's hired men have food to spare? And here I am starving to death. I'll set out go back to my father and say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like one of your hired men. So he got up and he went to his father. <laughs> ကျွန်တော်ရထိုက်သောအမွေဥစ္စာကိုဝေရွေ့ပေးပါဟုတောင်းပန်လျှင်အဖာသည်ဥစ္စာများကိုဝေရွေ့သားတို့အားပေးလ
ตีมาเบมีบาดีก็ขวยปีละผิดเดนาวอีฟวันออฟเดมเซดแดดวีดไลค์ทูฮาวอาร์อินเฮริเทนซ์นาวโอเคพี่ที่เอาตัวดูก
And the Bible tells us that we've all sinned. Sin is a disease of the human soul. Sin is a barrier between man and God. And sin has to be atoned for. And the only way that can happen is through the shed blood of Jesus Christ on the cross. Sin is breaking God's standards or his laws. And the Bible says we've all sinned to come short of the glory of God. Now, you may ask, Franklin, what, what do you mean by sin? We're in the new millennium. The world is changing. Culture is changing. And our standards are different than they were even 10 years ago. God's laws do not change. God's standards are the same today as they were yesterday and as they will be a million years from now. And you say, but Franklin, what do you mean by God's standards? Telling a lie is a sin against God. Have you ever lied? Oh, you say, but Franklin, maybe just a, a small one. Oh, Sir Franklin, you're guilty of breaking God's laws. But God will forgive you. Bearing a false witness is a sin. Coveting is a sin. Stealing. Have you ever stolen anything? Oh, when I was little, I was at the market and I took a banana. Does that count? Sure it does. Stealing, whether you steal something small or large, is the same before God. You're guilty. Taking God's name in vain is a sin. Adultery. Any type of sexual relationships outside of a marriage relationship is a sin against God. Now there may be many of you tonight guilty of sexual sins. But I'm here tonight to tell you God will forgive you. He'll forgive you and he'll cleanse you. If you're willing to come to him by faith in his son Jesus Christ. You say, but Franklin, what hope do I have? I'm guilty. You see, murder is a sin. You say, but Franklin, now, in, in our country, you go to jail. Of course. Of course it's a sin. Abortion. In many countries in the world, it's legal. And there may be someone here tonight that's had an abortion. And it's haunted you. But I want you to know tonight, 
In God's eyes, it's murder. But God will forgive you. That's why Jesus Christ came. To take our sins. And the Bible says the wages of sin is death. But the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. All of us are guilty. Franklin Graham is guilty. Franklin Graham is guilty. I deserve death. I am a lawbreaker. But you say, what hope do we have, Franklin? The Bible says that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but should have everlasting life. Jesus said, I am the way. He said, I am the truth and I am the life. No man comes to the Father but by me, he said. There is no other way to God except through Jesus Christ and him alone he took our sins and he died on a cross in our place when he hung on the cross God poured on his son the sins of mankind while Jesus Christ was hanging on the cross he poured on his son the sins past sins present sins future that's you and me he paid the debt of sin in full and if you're willing to believe it and accept it by faith God will forgive your sin he'll heal your heart he'll give you a new life and a new beginning but you, to, but you have to come to him by faith and I'm going to invite you to do that in just a few moments if you're here tonight and you've never invited Jesus Christ into your heart into your life I'm going to invite you to get up out of your seat in just a few moments. And come stand in front of this platform. If you're one of the overflows, you can stand in front of the screens. But if you've never invited Christ into your heart, you can come tonight. By coming, you would be confessing your sin to God. Telling him that you're sorry. And by faith, believing on the name of his son, Jesus Christ. This young man was running. He ran from his home. He ran from his father. He ran from God. Are you running tonight? In my own life, I ran from God. It wasn't that I didn't believe in God. But I did not want to surrender my life to Jesus Christ. I wanted to have fun. 
And when I was younger, I wanted girls. Alcohol. I wanted to party. I wanted to have fun. But there was a, an emptiness in my life. You could go to parties. You could have fun. But there was an emptiness in my life that I could not fill. And there came a time in my life where I had a storm in my life. I didn't know what to do. And I got on my knees one night. I said, God, I have sinned against you. And if you can just take the pieces of my life, my life was broken, it was shattered. If you can take the pieces of my life, you can have it. And that night, I invited Jesus Christ to come into my heart. That night, I trusted him as my Savior. And that night, God forgave Franklin Graham. And he will do that for you tonight. Are you running from God? You can come home to your Father in heaven tonight. Now this young boy took the money that his daddy gave him. And he didn't run to the next town. The Bible says he went away to a far country. He got as far away as he could. And he spent all of his money on riotous living, the Bible says. He got involved with the club scene. He bought prostitutes. Alcohol. I'm sure he had drugs. And his pockets were full of money. And I'm sure that bought a lot of friends. <coughs> but after a while, it was gone. His friends left him. He had nothing left. He wasted everything. And maybe some of you tonight, you're wasting your life. This young boy Jesus spoke about had nothing left. Where are you tonight? Are you broken in your spirit? Are you spiritually empty? Have you been wasting your life? The Bible said there was a famine in the land. Is there a spiritual famine in your life? Everybody left him. He was all alone. Jesus said, I will never leave you nor forsake you. Will you come to him tonight? The only job this boy could get was feeding pigs. 
And the Bible said he began to be in need. What is your need tonight? I can tell you. You need Jesus Christ tonight. He can heal your heart. If you invite him, he'll come into your heart. Tonight you can be forgiven. You can be cleansed from all of your sins. You can leave this convention center tonight. Changed. Forgiven. With your sins behind you. With heaven before you. But you have to make a choice. The only way to God is through Jesus Christ. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man comes to the Father but by me. He took your sins. He took your sins to the cross. He died and shed his blood on that cross for you. He took your sins to the grave. And on the third day, God raised his son to life. The grave of Jesus Christ is empty. Now this young boy was hungry. He, he wanted to eat the pig food. But they didn't even give that to him. You see, he probably never had been hungry in his life. Before he left home. And the Bible says that he came to his senses. He realized he could go home. He realized that he had sinned against God. That he has sinned against his father. He was able to face the truth about himself. Will you say to God tonight that I have sinned? Will you face the truth about your sins? This young boy realized he had a choice. He could sit in the pen with the pigs or he could go home to his father. And tonight you have a choice. Tonight God will forgive you. But you've got to be willing to accept His Son Jesus Christ by faith. The Bible says, For the Son of Man is come to seek and to save that what was lost. Are you lost tonight? Are you spiritually lost? You see, this is why Jesus Christ came. He came for you. The Bible says, Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Now this young man was humble. He said he was sorry. 
He said, I will arise and go to my father. Will you come to your heavenly father tonight by faith? Do you realize you have sinned? This young man repented. You see, repent means to turn and go the other direction. This young boy was in the pig pen. He said, I'm going to leave this and I'm going to go home. So his life made a turn. If you, got, if you come to Christ tonight, you've got to be willing to leave your sins. So he arose and he went to his father. But when he was still a long way off, his father saw him. And his father was filled with compassion. He ran to his son and kissed him. This is a picture of our Father in heaven. For any of his children that are willing to come to him in repentance and faith. And the Father runs to his son. He puts his arms around his son. He kisses his son. The, the boy is filthy dirty. Living with the pigs. The father puts a robe to cover up that dirt. Put sandals on his bleeding feet. Puts the family ring back on the finger. And, and the father restored the son to his rightful place as a family member. And this is what God will do for you today. God wants to put his arms around you. He wants to welcome you home. But you've got to be willing to accept the sacrifice of his son, Jesus Christ. God doesn't want to judge you. He loves you. He's willing to forgive all of your sins. But if you reject him, if you reject his son, he has no choice but to judge you. The Bible tells us there's a day coming where God will judge this earth. Today is a day of grace and salvation. Will you come to Christ tonight? When the boy got to his father, this was the evidence that his heart had changed. He said to his father the same thing he said he was going to say when he was in the pig pen. He said, Father, I've sinned against heaven and against you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Franklin Graham is a sinner. Franklin Graham I'm not worthy of anything. 
The only thing I'm worthy of is God's judgment. I deserve death. I'm a sinner. I'm guilty. But I was 22 years old. When I told God I was sorry. And I invited Jesus Christ to come into my heart. And I asked him to forgive my sins. And that night, God forgave my sins. And I know that one day when my life comes to an end, God is going to welcome me home to heaven. But let me ask you tonight. Are your sins forgiven? You say, Franklin, I, I, I hope so. No, are you sure? If you're here tonight and you're not sure, you can be sure right now. If you're here tonight and you've never invited Jesus Christ to come into your heart, I want to ask you to do something right now. Just get up out of your seat and come stand in front of this platform. If you're in one of the overflows, you get up and come forward to one of the screens. And when we have all come, I'm going to have a word of prayer with you. You're not coming to Franklin Graham. I cannot save you. You're coming tonight to God. Your Father in heaven. And you're coming through faith in His Son, Jesus Christ. Asking God to forgive you. And by faith, inviting Jesus Christ to come into your heart. So come. We're going to wait. Come.
many people are coming. We're going to wait. But I have a question. Are you sure your sins are forgiven? If you're not sure, you make sure right now. If you came on a bus, they're going to wait. If you came with family or friends, they're going to wait. You may never have another opportunity like this in your life. Come to Jesus tonight. Trust him as your savior. Invite him to come live in your heart. He loves you. He loves you. So get up and come. If you're in the back, come to one of the screens. If you're here, you just come. Stand right here, right now. Come quickly. Remember tonight, God will forgive your sins. He'll heal your heart. But you've got to come by faith. The Bible says, by grace are we saved. Through faith will you come tonight. We're going to wait just a few more moments, but you come. I want to say a word to those of you that have come. And if you're still walking, you just listen as you walk, as you come. By coming tonight, you're saying to God, I'm a sinner. By coming tonight, you're saying to God, I'm sorry. And by coming tonight, you're saying to God, I believe that Jesus Christ took my sins to the cross. That he, that he died in my place. And by coming tonight, you're saying to God, I believe Jesus Christ is alive and I want to invite him to come into my heart. And 
Now I want to lead you in a prayer. A prayer, a prayer is simply talking to God. And if you pray this prayer in faith, God will hear your prayer. And so I want you to pray this prayer out loud after me. So let's pray. Let's talk to God. Dear God, I'm a sinner. I'm sorry for my sins. Forgive me. I believe that Jesus Christ is your son. I believe that Jesus died on the cross for my sins. I believe that you raised him to life. I want to invite Jesus Christ to come into my heart. To take control of my life. And I pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You prayed that prayer? I want you to know something. It's about 8.32. God has heard your prayer and he's forgiven you. You're forgiven. God has forgiven you. Now, standing next to you uh, is a person with a, a badge, his counselor. They're your new best friend. And we've got a book I want you to have. And I don't want you to leave till you get this book. It's very important because it'll help to explain what you've done here tonight. And I want you to get involved in a church. Tell the pastor what you did here tonight. Tell him you want to begin to study the Bible. The Bible is God's word from cover to cover. You just talked to God. He heard your prayer. As you read his word, he speaks to you. So we want you to have this book. And uh, we're going to have a, a closing prayer and then uh, we'll give you this book. So it's just another minute. Remember this. God loves you. He loves you. Don't ever forget that. And come back tomorrow. Bring a friend that needs Jesus Christ. I'll see you tomorrow. And uh, we're going to give this book to you and we're just going to have a quick prayer and then we'll give you this book.